One of the most difficult things about covering C Street, the C Street sex scandals and the fellowship, the secretive religious group behind C Street, has been that they're impossible to Google. Every town of any size has a C Street. The family, the fellowship, none of these names of these groups have any specific meaning. And presumably that's by design, so that they can be super-duper under the radar. One of the things we have learned about them over time is that secrecy is not incidental to what they are. It's a huge part of even their theology. So it's been really, really difficult to find out anything about them through original research, at least on a day-to-day -day basis. But the fact that Jeff Charlotte has a second book coming out about them now has driven the family to do something they have never done before, which is that they are waging a PR campaign on their own behalf. These guys doing public relations for themselves is like the Wicked Witch of the West hosting a swim party, or slugs moving to the salt flats. It's completely antithetical to who they are. But sure enough, because of Jeff's new book, they have started giving reporters, reporters who definitely are not Jeff Charlotte, lots of access to their leaders. Lots of access in order to write friendly whitewashes like this giant puff piece that was published in the New Yorker this month. One of the things we did learn in that New Yorker puff piece is that the family is also apparently launching a website for the first time. A website for their secret group. Presumably the URL will be written in some sort of you are the chosen people hieroglyphics. Joining us now for the interview is Jeff Charlotte. His new book is called C Street, The Fundamentalist Threat to American Democracy. He's also a contributing editor at Harper's Magazine. Jeff, congratulations on the new book. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Rachel. It's great to be back. Uh, first, I want to get your um, reaction to the family's reaction to you, uh, the family's PR offensive. It seems strange that they would be developing a website. You, you know, uh, 75 years of uh, secrecy and denying your own existence and uh, confronted with your culpability and uh, all kinds of things, uh, ranging from sex scandals to uh, uh, possibly genocidal bills in Africa. And you got to do something. So a website, that's, that's where they're starting. It's a, it's a small first step. The family has been working in the background of international politics and American politics for decades now, as you have documented. And every now and then, over the years, stories about them surface. But usually they are, they are dropped and forgotten about. What, what do you make of the, the news cycle, the, the cyclical nature of the coverage of this group? Well, it speaks, it speaks to the kind of sort of limited understanding, I think, of corruption that we, we function with in the press. You know, we understand a scandal uh, when it involves a, a politician in, in bed with the wrong person, in bed with a stripper or a, uh, an envelope full of cash. Um, that makes it clear. And in fact, that's what, uh, that's what put the C Street story in the map, is the sex scandals. Um, uh, the question then becomes, well, you go beyond that and you ask, those sex scandals are not what the organization is about. They don't exist to cover up a member's affairs. They exist to pursue this idea of government but God, a leadership led by God, um, and to export that idea backed up by American power around the world. That's a much more serious story. It's not, doesn't have as many giggles, uh, but actually has a lot more frightening aspects. That's what you have to confront, but that's not a story that mostly the media is is prepared or framed uh, to report on. Well, the next, the, the next big story that wasn't a sex scandal about C Street uh, that did get, uh, did get quite a lot of attention w was the family's ties to this kill the gays bill in Uganda. Mm -hmm. um, their defense happened in part on this show, the family trying to take credit for stopping that bill instead of being blamed for starting it. I know you went to Uganda for this book. What did you find about the family's involvement with the kill the gays bill? It was so much more extensive than I think I even understood when we were talking about this last year. I went at the invitation of David Bahadi, who is the member of parliament in Uganda who's proposed this uh, to kill the gays bill uh, and is the uh, the de facto leader of the family's group uh, in parliament, uh, the, the, the Ugandan C Street, if you will. Um, and he said he wanted me to come there and he would explain to me what it was all about. Um, and we had, we had a series of meetings. Uh, he was very candid. He was caught about his political education in the United States. Uh, his friendships with American politicians, his great admiration for Senator Jim Inhofe, who has visited a lot and talked about the moral underpinnings of a government led by God. But most of all, what he cleared up was any doubt about what his intentions were. Uh, I asked him, I said, uh, is, is the goal to kill all gay people? And he said, well, in a perfect world, yes. He says, but we live in a democracy, so we go step by step. 
The other important thing he wanted me to understand was that he felt that he had received no pressure from the Americans to drop the bill. So they're saying that they're putting pressure on him. He's saying, you know, I didn't get that memo. Uh, and that came from not only him, but other Ugandan politicians who are involved in the bill. They said, um, uh, it seems to us that mainly what the family is doing is managing PR. Wow. Uh, one of the things that blew my mind about your conversations with David Bahati, as relayed in the book, was him describing um, his friendship with Mitch, uh, meaning Mitch McConnell, being on a first-name basis with very familiar Republican leaders um, in this country. Did that all... It, it, is, is that, in fact, what the family is designed to do, to put people on first-name bases so that they can essentially spread power around the globe via American projection? It, that's exactly it. And David Bahati's understanding, he said, you know, when I first came over, he came over to the United States in 2005 to study at a conservative uh, activist group called the Leadership Institute. Uh, and they're the ones who put him in touch with the family. He started coming over for the national prayer breakfast multiple times. And he said it warmed his heart to know that wherever he would go from, from Washington, D.C. to the Ukraine, he was now part of this family. He had brothers. He could do business with them. He said that, you know, one of the great things was that although some of the Americans had denounced the bill, they could continue to work together on other biblical issues like defense contracts. Wow. Jeff Charlotte, author of the book C Street, The Fundamentalist Threat to American Democracy. Uh, thank you for your time tonight, Jeff. Uh, good luck with the book tour. Congratulations on the book. Thanks, Rachel.